Hi folks, welcome to our 12th episode of Ask Evelyn. Let me add our co-host in here. All right, we're getting Pat signed on here. Hi, Pat. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm hoping this will work. I'm outside today just for a change of pace. And it's a little bit windy here, so hopefully this will work out. But. All, right, thank you. All right, well, welcome. Thanks. <laughs> well, everybody, welcome to our show. This is the 12th episode of Ask Evelyn on Where Does It Go Wednesdays. And I'm Becca Fong. I'm the single family, I'm the residential solid waste outreach planner for Seattle Public Utilities and my co host. Hi, y'all. I'm Pat Kaufman. I do the commercial recycling and composting at Seattle Public Utilities, and I am a person that helps businesses recycle and compost as much as possible. All right. I have a co-host here who wants to say hi really quick. <laughs> oh, now he's feeling shy. We're going to have to put him on the payroll. He, he's, I know. He goes up so often. I know. I, I know, but it's tough. A lot of you are probably at home with your kids as well. Mm -hmm. Um well, we've got a really great show for you this week, and a good reminder that this show is powered by your questions, so feel free to send them to us in your comments. You can also send them to us on our different social media feeds through Twitter, Facebook, and then, of course, on Instagram. Or you can also email them to us at askevelyn at seattle.gov. All right. So let's see. In our show today, we've got a couple of really great questions. We're also going to check in on last week's waste challenge, and then we'll introduce a new uh, weekly waste challenge for the next week. So first up, we've got a question from one of you um, that came to us from Instagram. So Pat, you want to kick us off? You bet. Jump right in here. So question one, dear Evelyn, I have an empty kerosene one gallon can that is clean and metal. Is it okay to place it in the recycling? That's a fair question. Uh, you know, it's metal. We do we do message, you know, to our customers that you can put metal things in the recycling. Um, on our recycling panel, we even show little bits of, of, of metal items, you know, a tin box or an old pot and pan. So, you know, one could think that metal containers could just go in the recycling. But unfortunately, no. This is a, you know, flammable materials, hazardous materials, you know, cautionary materials like that. They really are things. Probably can't go in the uh, um, recycling. It's just not safe for the recycle center. Uh, the recycle center staff are, uh, you know, it's it's not it's not a good idea to have things. It's a uh, um, okay. Residue. Hi. <laughs> you say hi, bug. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, a kerosene can like that is going to have to go uh, to the household hazardous waste facility. Is the place to take it. The metal might, in fact, will, will in fact be recycled as metal eventually, but they're the, they're the facility that is set up to manage those types of containers. Um, and that's just your, your common, you know, household lawnmower gas can or a kerosene can or something like yeah. that. But then there's those other gas canister type products as well that usually come up in questions like this at the same time. Um, there are those camping canisters, the propane ones. Right. Those green ones. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's warm. It's getting nice out. People are thinking about camping a lot more. Right. And so I kind of did wonder when I read this, I mean, even though um, it says kerosene, we right. often talk about kind of the smaller one pound right. green kind of Coleman canisters that screw on to the, the yeah. camp stoves. And um, and then also kind of the smaller isopropyl backpacking steel canisters. Right. We think about those a lot. Those come up as questions quite often. And I think a lot of folks are just going to be producing those as we get into, you know, the best time of the year in the Northwest. Right. <laughs> yeah. Those barbecue units uh, or, you know, coke camp stove cooking units that receive the green disposable or single use package canister. Those, those canisters, you know, I, it's kind of like, it's one of those products that is, um, uh, it's just really challenging for, our, for consumers because it's very convenient, has the high level of convenience, but it's just, it's not a great product in that you, to responsibly manage that resource of metal, you can't put it in the recycling. You'd have to take right. it to the W facility, which is only a couple locations in the city and you have to drop off during the, their open hours. 
Right. Uh, it's a great service that's provided to all the customers, but it is a limited time available service. If you have a totally empty canister, like you've totally emptied it out and it has released all of its fuel through your, your stove and whatnot, then that canister is garbage in our, in our curbside program. Right. For kind of the convenience of it, then you can dispose of it in the garbage. Um, what, a, what a waste to throw away that, that you know, that metal. Like that I know. It is bummer. really sad. I mean, I definitely yeah. take it to household hazardous waste for um, – those backpacking style stoves, you can take it back to MSR Soto facility. It's on yeah. First Avenue yeah. right by Macrina Bakery, um, just south of the stadiums. Okay. And then the Mountaineers, if you're in the north end at Magnuson Park, they will also take them. And the way that they mitigate kind of the danger of why we can't accept those steel canisters at the recycling uh, facility is that what they'll do is they'll puncture them. And then, you know, either collect the gas or through the puncture, they'll ensure that it's empty when they take them for recycling. So that's right. Um, you know, we don't advise in our guidelines that consumers puncture their cans. No. <laughs> it's not a simple thing like opening yeah. a tube or something. It's it's a different deal. And so, you know, that is the way that the trained, you know, service providers will do that. Puncturing the can, then flattening the can, and then you're in right. a lot of good scrap metal in the situation. So, yeah, so it's up north. It's the Mountaineers at Magnuson Park, right? Yep, yep. Mountaineers oh, at Magnuson Park. I'd call first, though. Yeah. You know, I don't know what their uh, services are during this time. When we're all kind of, you know, stay home, stay safe. So really kind of have to do that is call ahead. Um, Definitely. And then I just want to double back on the kerosene question. Um, I think that, you know, use up what you have. That's yeah. the way to think. And the whole conversation was if you have something that burns kerosene, if you discover a can and a in the garage of the house you just moved into or something, then that's one thing. But if you have a kerosene heater, I'm trying to have because you really want to get the function out of the people. It goes to each Absolutely. Disposal option. You know? Yeah, definitely. It's like use it all up. And so yeah. kind of to recap, if you've got kerosene or gasoline, use it up if you can. If it's not good, take it to the household hazardous waste. We have two locations, one in the north end and one in the south end. The north one is at Stoneway and about 128. Yeah, 128. The South Hazardous uh, Household Hazardous Waste Facility is across the street from the South Transfer Station. That's right. If you have some of those um, steel camping gas canisters, you can take them to MSR's facility in Soto on First mm -hmm. Avenue, south of the stadiums, or give the Mountaineers at Magnuson Park a call, and you can take right. them to them as well. But do not ever put them in the recycling. They are a huge hazard, and we want to make sure that everybody is safe. So. Yes. I know that they're metal and it's super tempting, but please, please, please go that extra mile. Yeah. And one more plug, actually, we have a series of neighborhood collection events that we oh, do. Yeah. They've been postponed due to COVID, but we're hoping to reschedule those in the fall. So hold on to those uh, canisters uh, through the camping and summer season. And we're hoping to be able to offer a take back option at those events for free. Yeah. So Good. keep an eye on our website. So those are, that's at seattle.gov slash beyond the cart, utilities slash beyond the cart. Yeah, utilities is in there. Seattle.gov utilities. Absolutely. Hold on. I got, I need a minute with my co-host here. Okay. Because we're going to move into question two here in a sec. We are going to go uh, into question two. So Bug, would you mind waiting for me inside and I'll be with you in a second? <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. It's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. All right. All right you want to hang with me? Okay. You All can right. hang with me, but you got to be quiet so I can finish talking to Pat. And all the people that are watching our show, okay? There's no one else on the screen. <laughs> you can't see them on the screen, Bug, but there's a couple more people there. All right, question two, which is kind of, you know, in line with, with some of the other things that are coming on with the warmer months. So, dear Evelyn, how do I know what plates, cups, and utensils can go in the compost? There are all kinds of different labels. Some say compostable in an industrial facility, and I've seen others that just say eco on them. Yeah. I'm hoping to find a good option for summer barbecues and picnics to make cleanup easier. Thanks, Connie. Super good question, Connie. Oh, and there are a lot of options out there. And Pat, just say Connie? Pat being <laughs> our commercial, our commercial uh, lead who works a lot yeah. with food service for stuff. So I'm going to let you kick off because you really are the well known. Oh, that's good. So there's a couple things in that question. One is that food service businesses are required to use specific packaging. And the, so if it's a dine-in situation or a situation where it's an event or something, they have to use compostable. For takeout, they can use a recyclable package. But the question is really about home barbecues and backyard picnics. Right. Um, 
I have a couple samples here of product that uh, are available at most grocery stores. Um, it's really been fascinating. As, as cities and universities and hospitals and sports facilities have taken on this all compostable um, uh, strategy to reduce landfill bound waste, there has been more and more product reaching the shelves of the supermarket, which is great that it's compostable. That is awesome. It's nice to have some more options. We, yeah. we used to have a lot of options before. They were like one or maybe two. Right. And so we always used to message that these kinds of cups, I'm sorry, plates, <laughs> uh, the printed on plates, we used to always say, well, if there's any kind of print on it, that's a plastic coated plate and it is garbage versus the uncoated Chinette type plates, which right. are coated and they can be composted. However, newsflash, Breaking news, <laughs> um, this particular option from Solo Plates says commercially compostable on there now. Okay. So what we see is the packaging industry, as, as I mentioned, you know, the commercial sector and through the channels of supply and demand of like some of the big facilities and events and whatnot, there's been a lot more demand on compostable packaging. So it is now uh, more available on the shelf in the grocery store. So. You know, we have to adjust our messaging. Sure. Fall back and say anything with printing on it means it's got a plastic coating on it. Well, this coating is a compostable coating. Which is pretty cool now. Yeah. Is it is it PLA, do you know? So it's well, like a public... that I don't know. They okay. Didn't, they didn't put that in the information here. I have a message into Solo to see what, what are they using? What what uh, substrate are we talking about okay. here? Um, but the idea is that if they go to the lengths of having you know, the compostable packaging labels on here and such, then we're okay with that. So Good. customers can see the word compostable, like even though this is always, this is actually a, a, a similar brand to Chinette, the Uncoded, okay. the, a store brand from Kroger, but they actually have the words 100% compostable right there on the cover. Okay. When you see that, you know you're okay to put it in the food and yard cart. It's a, it's a totally compostable item. And I also wanted to mention, you know, that Napkins, of course, are compostable as well, but it's also a great opportunity to use reusable napkins. Totally. You know, totally. Maybe even I, a fork. Exactly. And I think, you know, in the in the the times that we're in right now, I think a lot of folks are tending to bring their own things. Yeah. Which is helpful, you know, as folks are kind of opening up and um, going to socially distanced, you know, barbecues, like a six foot barbecue, you know, people are bringing their own food, they're bringing their own plates. So it's a really good time to practice bringing reusable because you don't, even if say you're hosting such an event, you don't have to provide plates and forks and cups for everybody. If you could ask folks to bring their own, that's also another great option. Right. So. I think uh, I'll remember back to the um, Curb Waste and Conserve newsletter that, that is, you send out to customers. Yeah. The there was a highlight on that. It was the, uh, the night out Seattle where, you know, cut, residents were invited to bring their own plates to their street, uh, street picnic. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a good way. I'm on a call right now. No. Um, I've got a lot of interruptions today. I, that I need to kind of make it a little more clear what's going on. But thank you guys. That's the, the beauty of Instagram Live. So I'll just yeah, call I think, real quick on another phone. I'll just give you a quick call. Just I know, right? Another, a little bit of <laughs> we'll kind of add to it, right? Um, so I think kind of a recap, that's really good to know that if it has the word compostable on it, even if it has that print and that shiny coating that we're okay to go. Um, and I think also, you know, I use a lot of those Chinette plates as well, because those are guaranteed to be yeah. postable. They don't have a coating on them. Yeah, 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 that's what I would call the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traditional picnic plate, kind of what we call the salad yeah. plate, that's going to be fine for composting too. All the manufacturers and a lot of different makers of that plate, those are all fine because they're not. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So hopefully we gave you guys some good tips. And of course, we're always going to plug trying to look at some reusable options. All right. So last week's uh, weekly waste challenge was the concept of using an eat first box. So this is a concept from Love Food Stop Waste, where what we do is you literally have a box that says eat first on it. And you put the food that you that is either going to go bad first into that box and to make sure that people eat that. OK, so I'm going to take you guys into my fridge. I don't have an actual eat first box. But what I'm going to do is show you kind of some different uh, techniques that I've used there to kind of put food front and center. Okay. Okay. While you're walking, I'll just share that my technique, my house, uh, as an eat first strategy is really just to try and keep a good eye on things. I don't have an eat first section in the fridge. I just 
Uh, and I think recently that we've been at home, we're doing a lot more meal planning and stuff. So, um, cause we're trying to limit the number of trips we're taking to the grocery store. Right. We're really tracking, you know, how, how long has that been in the fridge? Trying to keep those on first as, as available. So let's see your fridge. Okay. Here's kind of an, an option that we've used for our fridge is that what we've done is that it's kind of generally been a bit of an unmitigated disaster. But what I've done is I reorganized the shelves here. So this one that you open right away, this has all of the leftover food. So we've got like fresh berries that we picked mm. from the garden that are ready to eat. We've got little bits of kind of snack things. We've got little bits of leftovers. We've got kind of this little lentil spread. I've got a little bit of kind of strawberry syrup. And the fact that they're all right in front. So you guys saw my little one, you know, when he's opening the fridge and wanting something to eat, strawberries, the snack that's going to go bad first and I want him to eat is front and center. So he can really kind of self-serve himself. And then things that go further kind of that are on smaller shelves and further in the back are things that are going to last a lot longer. So sure. that has actually really helped mitigate throwing away a lot of stuff. And I think, you know, labeling it as an, as an eat first box would be super helpful as well. Uh, but that strategy has worked pretty well for us. And we have thrown away a lot less stuff in the last couple of, in even just this last week. So all that's, right. That's a nice try. I, I'll give you uh, extra credit for all those reusable containers. That you <laughs> the stream tub and the yogurt tubs and the jars. I mean, I don't see any Ziplocs or anything going on in there. Well, and, and what we found was that when we were using like Ziploc bags and things you couldn't really see through, oh, was wow. that people visually like you didn't really realize what there was to eat and things tended to get pushed into the back of the refrigerator. So I use a lot of clear glass jars just because you yeah. can physically see what's in them and then I can put them at the front. Yeah. And so for my kids and everybody else in my family, it's like when you open that refrigerator, there's stuff that's ready to eat. And they're like, oh, I see it. I think I want to eat that. So, so that's been super helpful. And I hope that that maybe gives you guys some ideas of what to do too. So for next week, mm -hmm. our weekly waste challenge is – um, to try out some of the water saving tips on savingwater.org. So right. a lot of folks have probably seen, if you're an SPU customer, you've seen our water quality report, our annual water quality report, reaching your mailboxes this week. And there's just a lot of different tips. And for, I know for both of us, Pat, we have gardens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really figuring out the water levels are lowest in the Northwest. I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize that, that it's supposed to rain here all the time. Don't we have lots of water? But there's le it rains less during the summer than a lot of other places that you think of as traditionally sure, a lot sure. drier. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that I'm going to look up some of those tips and we'll report back. Um, I'm thinking of definitely a couple for my garden to see if, if I can figure out different ways to kind of conserve a little bit more water. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we can come back to the strategies next week, I guess, but, you know, soaker hoses and totally. you know, timers on the sprinklers and stuff. And so, yeah, I, I just remember times when I would like a while back where you, you go in to go to bed and like, is the water running? Like, oh, I left the sprinkler on the back. I know, right? <laughs> kind of moments where you want to yeah. avoid. <laughs> yeah, trying to avoid some of those things, definitely. All right, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in. We're really glad that you could join us for another episode of Ask Evelyn. So uh, thank you so much, so much for tuning in. It's really a lot of fun. It's definitely a bright spot in my week. And I yeah, love you. it. I love definitely it. a good one for you. So remember to send us your questions. You can send us to uh, send them to us through all of our different social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So thanks for um, our Instagram follower who sent us that kerosene question. Um, and remember to tell at least one person about us because we'd like to get the word out a little bit more. And we will see you next week. Wednesday at 1130 for another episode of Ask Evelyn. And we hope that you guys find this as useful advice from your utility. And thanks for bearing with me and um, my very active family. <laughs> Great. Good. Fun. <laughs> I think it's very relatable. I think a lot of us are dealing with that situation. So, all right. Well, I'm Becca Fong and Life Simpler with Less Stuff. And I'm Pat Kaufman. Remember to recycle right. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.